Bestbookbits.com presents The Art of Hunting Humans, a radical and confronting explanation of the human mind by Sydney Muzzy. The Art of Hunting Humans is a 2019 reader's favourite silver medal winner. The Art of Hunting Humans presents key aspects of the human mind. With straightforward language, weird metaphors and practical examples, it enables readers to understand human behaviour and evaluate their lives from an outsider's perspective. Designed to challenge rather than comfort, The Art of Hunting Humans sees itself apart from anything else written in its field. The result is a skeptical, radical explanation of the mind that provides extraordinary insights into the inner worlds of human beings. Book blurb. The age-old art of hunting humans is one you must orchestrate with care. In The Art of Hunting Humans, you'll learn essential facts about Earth's smartest primate and discover mistakes that are common among hunters while in pursuit of their prey. Whether you are an experienced hunter or a novice, this guide is essential reading. In it, you'll learn the major steps for a hunt, from correct observation and selection of your prey to choosing the tastiest bait. It will reveal how to leverage human self-ignorance and strange behaviours and expose flaws of which they are oblivious. At the end of the book, you'll have the opportunity to meet the superiors, creatures like no other. You better be ready. Even if you're a seasoned hunter, The Art of Hunting Humans provides extraordinary insights into human behavior as well as tips that will blow your mind. Almost everything in this book is a trap. Enjoy. Book Summary Chapter 1 Introduction Exploring Human Ignorance and Flaws Nothing compares to the thrill of chasing the perfect prey, hunting socially sophisticated primates known as human beings, is the ultimate mission any creature can pursue the most challenging and fascinating journey one can take. Human beings are planet Earth's smartest and most dangerous animals. Due to the complex human central intelligence system, human behavior is more sophisticated than that of all other Earth-born creatures. When hunting humans, there are many weaknesses you can exploit. Here are two. Just like dogs. A fundamental feature to play with is the trust that humans have in their emotions, feelings, sensations, or whatever you want to call these things, this trust provides a big opportunity. Why? Well, because humans don't realize that their brains train them like a human would train a dog. Fear is gold. To manipulate a human, you can intimidate him by using fear, or you can enthrall him by playing with his vanity. A human's need for social approval is one of the easiest to manipulate. And thirdly, humans are often deeply emotionally invested in preserving their ignorance of unsettling truths. Among humans, ignorance is widespread. Know your prey. Finally, Sun Tzu, one of Earth's most famous practitioners of war, once said, Know thy enemy, and know yourself. In a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. Know thy enemy. This is the key. You must take the time to observe your prey, and know it better than it does. Number two, roadmap and warnings. A guide to this book. It is essential that you alter how you view human beings. You must make something of a paradigm shift, which can be harder than you think. Forget everything you know about humans and start from scratch. To help you change your mindset and attitude, we will start with some basic concepts. Chapter 3. Just Codes. A Broken Communication System. If we fully understand how ineffectively humans communicate with one another, we can use this knowledge against them. To show you how important this is, during wars, one side will often target its opponent's communication channels to isolate, divide, and mislead. So when hunting, understanding the intricacies of your prey's communication is vital. Words, flags, and smoke signals are all just inefficient sets of codes. Language is merely a translation into words of the images inside a human's head. However, because communicating in one's mother tongue feels natural. Humans have a hard time accepting that words are vague facsimiles of what they want to express. Humans often think that they are explaining themselves completely because it feels natural. They are accustomed to the code. The codes humans use to communicate are highly inefficient, like old submarines that transmit Morse code to each other. Of course, one craft won't be able to express everything that is happening inside its shell. So in the same way no human can express himself fully 
even though they all like to think that they can. So when humans filter rough codes from what other humans, it's easy to understand why there is so much confusion on planet Earth. Chapter 4, Alternative Realities, Inside the Captain What humans don't realize is that when their central nervous system, their brain receives information from the eyes and ears, like the lookout and messenger, it makes best guesses about what the information means and what to send to their captain. What a human sees and notices is slightly different to the others around him. This is because what a human sees, hears and smells isn't reality. Instead, it is a hugely filtered best guess of what is real. Consequently, every human being's interpretation of reality is different. Every human being's interpretation of reality is different. It is interpreted and replayed inside his head like a hallucination. Each human brain projects different images inside his head. Each human lives in a different reality because their brain translates information from their senses differently. Different realities can expand to situations. The world outside is too complicated, so humans work with limited information. In truth, when humans know or care about something, they see more. The brain doesn't inform a human of everything, it chooses what to report and the amount of detail. Most information captured is simply ignored. For example, humans are well aware that during a stage which they call being in love, a love-struck human often alters his reality and, so, is unable to spot defects in his partner, or he simply minimizes their importance. So humans are sort of aware of this phenomena. However, what they fail to acknowledge and where an opportunity arises for us is that humans distort reality continuously and at a much deeper levels than they think. Every day, a human is exposed to an avalanche of information and only a fraction will reach his awareness. Only a fraction of information will reach his awareness. The power of the messenger. The messenger decides what the captain should be aware of or not and how the message should get to him. And if you think about it, you will realize the enormous influence the messenger has. He controls which information the captain receives and he chooses how it's delivered. In effect, the messenger can adjust the narrative to influence the captain's decision. And one of the critical elements of a great deception is to convince your victim that he is in control. A human's reality isn't shaped just by culture, knowledge or experiences. He also sees things differently depending on his mood. The captain is always inside the cabin, always. The key thing to understand is that every human sees the world from inside his head. Every human sees the world from inside his head, the captain's cabin. Everything is a replication of what is going on outside. Basically, humans live in a constant hallucination, like they are wearing virtual reality goggles. If you can manipulate sensations that humans love by replicating them inside their heads, you will have the power to shape them without needing the object. While many things can hurt a human, they are limited by reality. The number of possible dangers, however, that a human is afraid of is several times greater because of the magnifying power of his imagination. Takeaways from this chapter. For a human being, his perception of reality is often uncomfortable, so his ever-vigilant brain suppresses and alters reality to protect his fragile captain. Yes, the messenger tricks the weak captain to avoid additional problems. Needing to blame others is usually a sign of weakness. You will often see humans attempt to protect themselves in this way, even though doing so should be embarrassing. This idea of humans creating alternative realities isn't easy to accept, but it will make it much easier for you to understand the curious and abnormal behavior of your prey. As you will observe, a large portion of humans are immune to reason and facts, and it is not unusual for them to deny problems exist if they don't like the consequences. And if a human wishes to change another human's mind, Providing more information to support an argument won't help. As a rule of thumb, if your human prey doesn't like the outcome of something, he will usually question the problem and deny it existed in the first place. This way he doesn't have to deal with the consequences. Often, his denial will be at the messenger's, not the captain's level. So, he'll truly believe in what he says, we kid you not. Don't ever offer solutions for the problems your prey complains about. 
If you do, it won't help you manipulate him. In these cases, humans are usually immune to reason and don't want a solution. When you see a human in denial or blaming others, don't interrupt. Remember this quote by one of Earth's greatest warmongers, never interrupt your enemy when he is making a mistake, Napoleon Bonaparte. Chapter 5, The Isolated Captain, First Tips. The first practical application, repetition. With the captain in his cabin mindset, it is easy to understand why humans are usually condemned, fated, cursed to repeat the same mistakes endlessly. When you begin observing and hunting humans, you will notice that they often face the same problems time and time again. What makes humans so dysfunctional? From what we have presented until now, a human's filtered reality, his ability to notice certain things, and his selective attention is a culprit. First, alternative reality. Every individual human being would tend to pay attention to things, objects, and situations that others may not be aware of or care about. Also, based on each human's background and experience, they can notice different things and details while in the same situation. So, as previously said, humans see reality differently. Remember, reality is complex, so there is always something happening around humans that allow them to reach the conclusions that they desire. Humans see what they look for, and understanding this fact will help you recognize the problems they face. Secondly, desire. Each human has a pattern of desire, so he is attracted to and finds pleasure in the same things. Without noticing, humans usually chase the same type of humans over and over again. So, it's often their desire, what they chase, that creates the reoccurring problems humans complain about. Thirdly, behavior. Without noticing, humans also create problems by the way they behave. Humans can't comprehend that. Most often, they are the architect of their problems. Another practical application. Listen to the words of your prey. A human's words expose the core of his reality and reveal a glimpse of what information he pays attention to and how he filters it. The three levels of the funnel. Number one. The captured reality that is detected by each human's senses, eyes, ears, etc. Number two, the perceived reality, a small part of level one that the brain processes. This is the core, what he pays attention to. And number three, the commented reality, a small part of level two, which is the part humans choose to talk about, the core of the core. Humans grasp but a fraction of what's going on, captured reality and then filter it in their own way, perceive reality. Then they use this small portion to make comments, commented reality. As you can imagine, what humans talk about should expose the crumb of the reality they pay attention to. However, it gets better. Knowing what a human values is essential when deciding which trap and bait to use. Words are just a means for communicating to the world a slither of the information the captain receives. Therefore, Hunters should pay attention to what their prey says because, through their words, they are expressing the fraction of reality they see and how they see it. As a rule, the things one human criticizes another about reveal clues for what they can use against them. When a human criticizes something, he is also, in an indirect way, saying he is not that, or in other words, he is better than that. Whatever a human talks about reveals what he pays attention to. Listen to what he says, and especially to what he complains about, and you will discover the best bait for your hunt. Chapter 6, Haunted by Meanings, Hidden Associations So, human communication is a mess, and Earth's smartest animals live in different realities. One consequence among many is that each human continues to face the same problems over and over again. The meanings human attach to things and situations vary widely, among them and profoundly affect how they perceive their surroundings. Humans are unaware of the associations they make. Associations are hidden, and so humans don't realize they see different things. Do you know that every human has an inbuilt code book to decipher his environment? It's true. And like the messenger's interpretations, each human's book of codes is different. Consequently, humans appear to be talking about the same thing, but many times they are not. So it is possible to observe completely different behaviours between humans facing the same situations. 
different associations at group level. Let's look at a few everyday situations. In some parts of Earth, getting a tan is considered desirable and leads to more social approval. There, white humans sunbathe or apply artificial methods to darken their skin. Meanwhile, in other places, chalk white skin is considered more attractive. So humans actually inject substances into their veins to achieve this goal. So a human from one part of the planet like China will have an opposing idea of desirable skin color than one from another part like Brazil. Both humans share the same goal, but to look good or be sexy, one hides from the sun while the other chases it. Skin color can have opposite meanings from different groups of humans. Misunderstandings happen between cultures, despite humans knowing that interpretations of things and situations can vary widely. When hunting, aim to know better than your prey what things such as power or marriage represent to him. Hidden associations. A discussion can be an exchange of ideas or a chance to see who is best. Read between the lines to understand what humans are really talking about. Different meanings in human relationships. Humans are usually unaware of all the associations behind whom they find attractive. They just know they find another either hot or not. The thing to understand is that hidden associations can be radically different from human to human, but the outcome is usually powerful. Humans reach important conclusions with a minimal understanding of the reasons why. They don't treat it as a possibility, but most often as a logical and certain conclusion. Humans think everybody reads from the same codebook. They are confident that their often erroneous conclusions are correct. Just like a human reads the wrong map and feels sure he is heading in the right direction, a wrong book of codes misleads a human's interpretation of the world. So, often, humans' captains are receiving the wrong information and perceiving alternative realities. Continually changing unchangeable truths. Interestingly, most humans are unaware that what they believe to be universal truths have changed over time. For example, among humans, dominance during sex is currently associated with being on top. In days gone by, however, dominating meant being beneath a partner. So two humans both want to be in the driver's seat can do so in opposite ways. One can be on the top and the other can achieve the same goal on the bottom. So, Many of the truths humans believe are simply a product of their generation, and yet they act if they have always been so. As a result, it becomes even more difficult for them to question the assumptions in their minds. An ancient and essential feature. It is important to note that hidden associations or simply inner shortcuts are not all bad. In fact, many are necessary because they allow humans to react quickly to things and situations without expending much cerebral energy. Though often necessary, the problem with shortcuts is that humans are addicted to fast, easy ways of seeing the world, and they can't kick the habit. The human brain assigns meanings to the stuff, not just often, but always. So that is not just a lion, it is a predator and danger all at once. It's true that analysing a situation objectively is different and energy intensive for humans. In modern times though, Analysis that at least avoids wrong conclusions such as, he refused to wash his dishes today, so he doesn't love me. The human is poor, so he's a loser. He's rich, so he's a winner. He's gay, so he's a freak. Some assumptions are essential for survival. For example, a human sees an angry dog and immediately assumes he should find a place to hide. Or if a human sees another approaching wearing strange clothing and holding an axe, he presumes that this odd character is trouble, so he crosses the street. Humans make assumptions based on their experiences, which, when fleeing from a lion or an axe-wielding weirdo, is a sound life-preserving strategy. However, very few humans are cognizant of the assumptions they make, and only awareness will enable them to ask questions such as, is wealth really an indication of intelligence? Or, is washing the dishes a proxy for love? Humans make so many incorrect assumptions that they are not even aware of. Assumptions often lead some humans to conclude that kindness is weakness and brutality is power. A want is a need and something that is common is normal. 
which then becomes the right thing to do. Some humans even directly link uncertainty with danger. Most can't see that all these associations can be both wrong and right. By not jumping to conclusions, you can uncover the truth. One of the most intriguing and misleading conclusions humans come to is that ranting and raving and trying to impose one's will on others is a sign of power. Most often though, in a group of humans, the one who makes the most noise is the weakest and the one who feels most vulnerable. It's true. Humans who feel compelled to demonstrate their power at higher decibels usually doubt whether they have any power at all. As you can see, a small sign can be viewed as related to strength or weakness, depending on human associations. Humans become masters of deception in order to avoid unpleasant experiences, and they use a technique of denial and blame. They ignore problems and keep busy to avoid thinking about them. It is also important to remember that all human parents were once children, so they also have a legacy of strange associations from their early years influencing them. As a result, throughout human history, there is a chain of events with cause and effect passed from generation to generation. The human brain's associations can have opposite and unexpected meanings. To complicate matters further, it is possible for your prey to have not just slightly different, but totally opposite meanings related to the same thing. As usual, it all comes down to what something means to each human. For example, feeling pain which one would naturally expect to be avoided, can lead a human to believe he is winning. And so, he can enjoy it. The way a human views pain can considerably change his perceptions of, and interaction with, reality. You see, all kinds of links can happen. Suffering can mean something to be avoided, or it can have a good connotation. Humans become immune to reason. Chapter 7. The Extremes. Human Draws. As if the hidden associations aren't crazy enough, here's another reality distorting human feature. These creatures organize the information within their heads into categories like draws. One small thing can transform a situation from being perceived as excellent to awful. In this chapter, we use draws as a metaphor for categories. Doing so will enable us to demonstrate how an even slightly different meaning between humans can lead to massive differences in how each perceives reality. Humans constantly categorize everything they see or pay attention to. You see, labeling things and situations helps them understand quickly what's happening around them. But for hunters, what's most fascinating is that humans usually have too few categories or draws as we describe them. So they must adapt. Yes, for many humans, their brain has minimal draws. So they label things based on what they have. What other choice is there? As expected, this feature causes extreme behavior because things get stuck in the duality of 0 or 100, good or bad, black or white, there is no middle ground. For example, if a human had just two drawers, black and white, he would have no choice but to place any color he sees in one of the two. So anything that isn't entirely white but may be interpreted as black. How does this all work in practical terms? Well, as mentioned, most humans have too few draws, so they label everything as either winner or loser. With only two large draws in their minds, these humans live in perpetual fear of being perceived by themselves or others as a loser. How does labeling happen? Labeling happens because humans receive information, so the message is compromised by the time it reaches the captain. All decisions for which draw to place the information into, how to label and store it into the human memory, are made before the captain receives it. The message is biased. The message is biased, tainted. Before a human can truly understand a situation, his heart pounds or he becomes angry. All these reactions are mostly beyond his control at the time. Should the human have developed more draws, he would have better control. People can present very different behaviors based on their interpretation of the occasion. You see, to a human with just two draws, success means he is a winner, and a small flaw makes him a loser, afraid, unlovable, and a social pariah. One draw holds many meanings. You wouldn't believe how often outwardly successful humans become disproportionately devastated by small setbacks. Understand this. An overreaction usually indicates a small number of draws. You see, 
exaggerated emotions are often caused by extra meaning that developed because of the win or loser way of analyzing things. A small mistake, meaning to a human that he is a loser. So whenever a human overreacts to a situation, it usually indicates that he has a poor grasp of reality and probably constantly fears becoming a loser. Labeling and categorizing affects humans all the time. Humans constantly use small clues to reach far bigger conclusions. Tip, if a human relies on small clues, you can fabricate them and let them reach the big conclusions that you want. You can create a whole new image of yourself based on minor details that are easy to arrange. So you can fabricate a small conclusion forming clues to enthrall and intimidate a human. You bet. Understand that if a human is extremely upset after a small mistake, it is usually because in his mind, he has jumped from the winner to the loser draw. Humans ignore problems using the weak captain strategy of blame and denial. Yes, these animals often deny reality because accepting that they are a loser in one aspect of their life is too painful. To them, being a failure in one thing and an achiever in another isn't possible. Blame and denial never fix the problems humans face, so they experience them over and over. It's a never-ending cycle. Chapter 8. The Brain's Puppet, Emotions and Desires The Mechanism The ancient brain, which developed several thousands of years ago and doesn't understand modern life or technology, calls the shots. And without question, humans follow orders. So if the brain instructs to be scared, angry or anything else, the puppet obediently follows its wise central system. When the messenger or brain detects a potentially threatening pattern, it switches to war mode. The human, though, might only be preparing for a class presentation. Emotions play a critical role in how humans behave, and humans are hardly able to question them. And of course, the brain signals emotions are not always right. Confront a human with the fact that his brain has been training him, and at a much larger scale, 24 hours a day since birth, he will probably enter into what we call denial mode. Humans struggle enormously to understand that what they feel is not necessarily right, wrong, or in fact, anything at all. It is merely good or bad stuff that the central system uses to train and guide them. So, just like Fido, most humans have limited self-understandings. They are their brain's puppets. The previous example showed that the brain uses a human's emotions to guide him to do what he believes is best, from avoiding pain to seeking pleasure and feeling good about it. The truth is that human's brain applies the same techniques as a dog trainer. It reinforces good stuff with pleasure and bad with pain. And as one can expect, pain can be extremely persuasive. The human brain, though, was designed thousands of years ago for animals clinging to survival in the jungle. Consequently, it still reinforces unnecessary behaviors, overeating sugar or fat, for example. The essential thing to remember is that humans' brains have been training them since birth, so most humans, like obedient dogs, are unaware of why they like some things and dislike others. The human brain, the messenger, creates reality, with some editing based on what it wants the captain to see. The brain, training him like a puppet, also decides when to send a human pleasant or unpleasant messages. That's a lot of control. One could say it's about time the captain stopped trusting his messenger so much and started asking questions. Desires, too, can be misleading. Humans most often don't fully understand their desires and just follow what their brains think they need. Humans don't question or understand their desires. The human brain implants desires to get what it feels is needed. Humans are often just puppets. Humans rarely question assumptions that translate into desires and emotions. They feel too real. Hidden competition happens more than humans imagine. Like between males of the same tribe, the mate and the father of a female, for example, competing for dominance of the house and family. Often you can see hidden competition disguised in weird discussions and small actions. Can you see how competition is far more prevalent in human behavior than they can recognize and how it affects humans' emotions and desires at a much deeper level than they know? Humans are complicated animals, aren't they? 
their ridiculous hidden associations can create not just emotions, but also desires to instruct them to do what their brains believe they should. And humans can make minor and major decisions about their careers, marriages, etc., while unaware of the real reasons why. Humans lack of an outsider's point of view. Humans struggle to observe themselves from the skeptical perspective of an outsider. Humans can only question their instincts, beliefs, emotions, and hidden associations if they study themselves from the skeptical perspective of an outsider, like a creature from another planet, but they hardly do. Can you imagine a human about to lose his temper and then ask him, why am I nervous? What does this situation mean to me? Should I feel this way? What can I learn from my nervousness? What does this desire mean to me? What am I really looking for here? Am I trying to escape from something? Can you imagine a human questioning his emotions or designs this way? No, right? It is beyond most humans' capacity to study their emotions skeptically as if from the outside of their bodies. Imagine a human who has never left his country. He would find it nearly impossible to question his culture, rituals, weddings, funerals, human greetings, etc. Expected social behaviors, social structures, and religious beliefs. For this human, given that he has known no other life, everything seems natural and as it should be. How could he possibly feel otherwise? Meanwhile, a foreigner would have a very different perspective and be able to evaluate these things from an outsider's perspective. Chapter 9. Prelude to the Captain's Personal Holy Grail. Perceived like a power. Humans become angry or irritated or simply feel unpleasant sensations when they perceive that they can't do what they need or want. You will see that when humans feel powerless, they get unpleasant sensations and conversely, when they get what they want, they feel in control and powerful, or pleasant, sensations. Angry in his day-to-day life, he usually can't see that the real source of his perceived lack of power or control over a situation. Our ancient brain hates not being in control. That's just how the brain operates. So it will send requests, emotions for the human to do something about the situation, unpleasant sensations, to get him out. The source of the problem, as usual, is the perceived lack of control over a situation, even if it doesn't matter much. You see, humans feel good and more powerful when they can do or get what they want, and they feel the opposite when they can't. Humans try to balance the minimum amount of perceived power, pleasant sensations in their minds. As we said, lacking power is unpleasant for humans, and sometimes they can compensate for the discomfort by acquiring short-term pleasure or power from other things. For example, a human gets dumped an unwanted divorce, so he indulges in compulsive shopping to compensate, or a human loses his job and kicks someone's ass in a bar to make himself feel powerful again. You see, in both situations, each human is trying to re-establish a perceived minimum level of power and pleasure. Perceived is the key word in our analysis, because the feeling of powerlessness happens inside a human's head. Chapter 10. Personal Holy Grail vanity. To simplify several concepts, let's say that each human has a line of power. This line traverses between whom the human thinks he is, his self-image, and whom he wants to be. By whom he wants to be, we mean a super version of himself, of what he is on a quest to become. Like the crusaders of old, every human seeks a personal holy grail, a dream, a super self, a goal. So there is the line of power that there is the route to reach the Holy Grail. Just like a ship on a mission, humans feel good when they perceive they are getting closer to their Holy Grail, and bad when they perceive that they are slipping further away. Simple. The line of power is the rope that links a human's current self-image to his Holy Grail. In general, only things that relate to a human's line of power will affect him. Events outside of it will usually have little or no impact. A human's personal holy grail usually depends on a combination of traits, his beliefs, knowledge, and past experiences, especially childhood, for example. It is the product of his desire to feel happier, safer, and more accepted, etc. Whatever a human's purpose is, holy grail, what matters to him is whether he is getting closer to or further away from it. And we must point out that once a human has consolidated the goal, it is difficult to change his focus. So what is success? 
The accomplishment of something, a purpose, a dream, is a simple definition of success, according to the human code. Success, it is just one word. However, look deeper and you will see that its meaning carries a lot. Every human's idea of success differs. Humans usually say that they understand the different definitions of success, but they have enormously difficult understanding of a human that contradicts their own. Almost all decisions humans make are based on their perceived super self. No matter how big the dream or how distant the holy grail, what matters to a human is whether or not he is moving towards it. Simple. A human can desire whatever he wants, and his desire will define the direction he wishes to go. Humans consistently bark up the wrong tree, so to speak, when trying to influence others. Beliefs such as hidden associations, which include suppressed memories, and his holy grail, become part of a human's identity. Humans' vanity is central in their lives, and it begins to form based on what they admire or are proud of. The holy grail is a goal, but the primary influence it has on a human is the direction it leads him to take. It defines his vanity. What makes a human feel pleasant or unpleasant sensations? It's simple. When closer to his holy grail, he feels good. Further away, he feels bad. And events outside of a human's line of power usually have little impact on his emotions. Chapter 11. Vanity. Practical Tips. To become a great hunter takes patience. A few helpful questions are, What is the meaning of success for this creature? What is he proud of? What is its super self like? Having a simple, specific definition of success is extremely risky for humans. A small bump in the road can pose a considerable threat and be devastating. Chapter 12, Skeptical to the Bone, Self-Interest Expanded. Every second of the day that humans work, play, relax, sleep, or do anything else, they are doing what they believe is best for them. A human's actions always, always, again, always start with self-interest, which is the lever that drives them. Every single human focuses on what they believe is best for them. Self-interest is the lever that drives all animals. Our concept of self-interest. Three major things influence how human brain behaves. Number one, human rewards expanded. Number two, its desire to maximize good things and minimize the bad. And number three, its capacity to consider the long term. Chapter 13, Survival Mode, Fear. Humans most often live in fear that they artificially create. Humans most often live in fear that they artificially create. The brain plays it with the human's emotions to drive him towards the direction it wants. One of the most potent emotions at the brain's disposal is fear. Fear is more than an emotion though. It is an unpleasant and overpowering feeling caused by a threat or anticipation of danger, pain or harm. Fear is difficult to ignore. Play with fear and you tap into the power of Mother Nature herself. Fear is a reaction caused by its brain detecting that its body might be vulnerable. Examples are anger, nervousness, extreme hate, frequent anxiety, high levels of stress or sometimes eager and aggression. Survival modes always start with dissatisfaction. There is without fail something lacking. So a human feels he needs something essential and therefore believes he is being deprived. The trick is that humans always think they need more than they do. Believe it or not, humans tend to suffer more from imagination than reality by creating unnecessary high needs for survival and being afraid of not meeting them. When humans fall below a minimum level of resources, alliances, or trust, they switch to survival mode and can't fully control themselves. Before pursuing his holy grail, a human must first focus on survival. He needs to feel his life isn't in peril. And for that to happen, a human must fulfill some minimum requirements. And when humans lack things, they feel vulnerable, which leads to fear, anxiety, anger, losing their temper, and all the stuff related to survival mode which, as you know, lowers their rationality and control. Humans in survival mode. Looking at the image, you will see the minimal level of requirements. Naturally, when below the minimum level of requirements, the brain alerts an animal that its life is in peril. 
Once these minimum requirements are fulfilled, though, the animal is freer to pursue its holy grail. So the main difference between the two situations are as follows. When a creature is above the line, he chases what he wants, his vanity, etc. Problems on the way usually cause some discomfort or disappointment, but nothing major. On the other hand, when in survival mode, where a creature is in its desperate pursuit of what it believes it needs to survive, even minor problems lead to it lose its temper and become aggressive. Anything can look threatening. There is one major difference between humans and other animals. Humans are more able to think in the long term. The future influences them more. There are three factors that determine whether a human feels safe. Resources, alliances, and trust. There is a direct link between a need for control and perceived vulnerability. The fact that some humans need to feel in control at all times, omnipotent, is a sign of perceived weakness. Just like the inexperienced hunters need more food in the jungle, powerful humans don't need to feel in control. They deal with problems if and when they occur. A lust for power, a symptom. Lust for power is an intense, insatiable desire to control everything, to be all-powerful. It happens when a desire, want, for power becomes a need. That humans who lust for power are trying to feel safe. Therefore, their unquenchable thirst for power and control is a symptom, an indication of a disease, a weakness. It exposes a perceived vulnerability. Humans manufacture a persona when they flaunt status symbols to increase social acceptance. They can use fancy clothing, jewelry, or maybe expensive sports cars to encourage others to reach favorable conclusions to view them as successful human beings. Therefore, a need for alliances can easily be confused with a need for resources because a human with more resources, like money, will probably be more socially accepted. Make no mistake though, the luxury goods market compromises a significant portion of consumers who have an enormous need for social acceptance because of low self-confidence. It's not the objects these humans seek, but the fulfillment of their basic needs. Objects are a mere means to an end. Objects are a mere means to an end. The tricky part though is that humans are oblivious to what's going on and they confuse status symbols with the goals they seek. As usual, a human's brain uses emotions and desires to play him like a puppet. When humans acquire status symbols, they do indeed feel pleasure and so they believe that the pleasant feelings are because of their object. In fact, it is their brain rewarding them for taking an action that will allow the brain to feel safer. It's as simple as that. As a general rule, the more a human relies on external entities, the more it is scared of losing them. As a rule, the happier a human is with a compliment, the more he needs it, and the more he needs external reinforcement, the more insecure he is. Chapter 14, Fear, Practical Tips. An animal that loses its temper is vulnerable. Some other common signs that identify vulnerable prey are number one, obsessions, an escape to a new world. Number two, extreme niceness, a slave of acceptance. Number three, extreme truths, a search for certainty. And number four, drugs, relief by ignoring bad results. Chapter 15, Prelude, the four characteristics. Most humans suffer from an acute lack of self-knowledge. Four characteristics of the human mind, judgment, and rigid rules. 16. Building a cage. The surveillance system. From childhood to adulthood, a human creates rules for behaving in society. Moral standards learned from parents, religion, those in authority, and even other kids at school, etc. The result is a guide to life, with contributions from every human who has ever tried to make him behave. Remember, Humans are born into an alien world. Rules reward with pride and happiness when obeyed and punish with shame and remorse when disobeyed. Humans judge themselves by their rigid rules and so they are too afraid to investigate their minds because they can't afford to stumble upon unexpected wrong thoughts and desires. Chapter 17. Observe the quarry. Time and resilience. An average human being would consider himself to be the king of his castle, his mind, fair enough. More often than not, though, mainly due to incompleteness, humans are far from being their own masters. They resemble clown kings, 
impotent rulers governed by dark forces that are too afraid to face or even acknowledge. In general, humans follow the path below. 1. Outward looking. Humans spend their lives looking outwards and repressing dark thoughts. 2. Inner ignorance. Humans usually refuse to look inwards to understand who they are, their thoughts, and what they need and want. And 3. Excessive comparison and adaptation. Chapter 18, Hunting Guide, Key Notes. Number 1, Just Codes. Humans don't express themselves as clearly as they think. Their internal system is highly inefficient. Humans have no idea about how much their words reveal, like when they criticize something. Number 2, each human's reality is unique. Inside the brain, every human is like a captain controlling a ship from inside his cabin, isolated dark room. The messenger translates everything that reaches the captain, everything, and humans confuse information the messenger supplies with reality. They, in effect, see the world with their brains, not their eyes. So humans project reality, hallucinate, and what they believe to be real is highly influenced by hidden associations and draws. 3. Emotions and desires. 4. Humans lack an outsider's point of view. 5. Expanded self-interest. 6. Fear and related feelings. 7. Vanity, pride and admiration. 8. Rigid rules. And 9. Time to observe. The layer where the captain exists, squeezed by the crew. That little, thin, grey circle is where the captain exists. Number one is crew, filtered reality that is captured through the senses such as the eyes and ears. Decides the fraction of the information to send, edits information using hidden association and draws, uses blame and denial whenever necessary. Number two is the captain, the thin grey circle, makes a small amount of decisions and thinks he is in control. And three is the crew, sends emotions and desires back to the captain while always focused on escaping fear and chasing vanity. It manages organs, heartbeat, body temperature, etc. Emotions and desires, repressed memories, holy grails, rigid rules, levels of minimum requirements, and expanded self-interest. The crew judges whether or not the animal is in survival mode, getting further away from or closer to its holy grail. Chapter 19, The Superiors. Piloting the animal. Superiors are scarce, enhanced human beings. Although they look like and can interbreed with regular humans, the distance between superiors and regular humans is greater than that between a human and a chimpanzee. The characteristics of superiors. To become a superior, a human must undergo an internal separation, a divorce between his captain and crew. He must split the parts of himself that he can control from the rest, which he can only train or tame. By doing so, a human being becomes a mere dot inside his head, and he pilots his body like a spaceship. A superior recognizes that he and what he feels are not the same. Emotions are indicators, not absolute truths. So, a superior pays attention to and questions his feelings, as if monitoring a control panel, and he reacts in a manner that he believes appropriate, not how his crew wants. Sensations are advices, not bosses. Superiors know that they gain self-awareness and discover what they want. It makes less sense to become upset by external things that are not real threats. By paying attention to and destroying wrong hidden associations, superiors slowly break down the pattern of angriness commonly seen in humans. Consequently, they hardly ever get annoyed at others. Superiors are secure and robust. Superiors need little and want big. They are free. Superiors don't have to live in poverty to need little. Having a low minimum requirement is a mindset, not a bank balance. Having a low minimum requirement is a mindset, not a bank balance. And superiors are actually often wealthy. Despite having low minimum requirements, these superhumans still search for the impossible without needing to achieve it. For a human to become a superior, he must dedicate himself to introspection and self-development. Also, rather than adopt a prepackaged super self courtesy of his social group, a human must create his own with a clear definition of success in mind. Superiors understand that self investigation never ends. Self investigation never ends. 
with relaxed rules of acceptance, superiors live in a zen-like state. They enjoy exploration, and due to the multitude of hidden associations humans face every day, it is an endless pursuit, which is the best part. Superiors plan for the long term, well aware that no human's life is certain. A superior's definition of happiness is inner peace, not strong feelings. Remember, humans are, in a sense, animals. Superiors are masters of their minds, super beings. They are complete and have low needs and well-defined holy grails. And last, realize that this book is not a guide for hunting humans. Rather, it is a quirky explanation for why humans behave in the ways that they do and how their minds work. This book is from the point of view of an outsider, a visitor from another world, which believes it was necessary to expose human characteristics and the problems that we all face. And that's a wrap on the book summary of The Art of Hunting Humans by Sidney Massey. If you liked the book, go out there and buy it on Amazon. I thought this book was absolutely amazing. Follow Sydney on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Take your time to leave a review with your favorite retailer. Also, sign up to huntinghumans.com to keep in contact and receive updates. If you like this summary and want to listen to over 500 more audiobook summaries, check us out on Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. If you're into the video book summary, find us on YouTube where you can watch over 500 book summaries. And if you're into the written book summaries, follow us on bestbookbits.com where you'll find over 500 written book summaries. If you're into books and want to join a free book club, check us out at bestbookbits.com forward slash book club where you can join the tribe, read more books, make new friends, get access to authors like Sydney, become a part of community of book lovers and join a mastermind of readers, thinkers and doers. If you want to be updated with the latest book summaries through a weekly newsletter, sign up to our weekly email newsletter by popping your email in the link below. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something out of this. Go out there and buy the book, The Art of Hunting Humans by Sydney Mazzy. Take care. Bye-bye now.